Today's objective is I can use an iterative design to send binary messages. And now this objective probably looks familiar to you. It's a mix of an iterative objective we've done before and a sending binary message one we've done before, but now they're um, combined. Now that you understand the significance of permutations, we're going to take that knowledge and try to create a protocol that is even more meaningful for us to send these binary messages. All communication protocols solve the problem of how to send a binary encoded piece of information uh, from one place to the other. This requires that the sender and receiver agree on how many bits form a proper message and how big the chunks of bits should be. Does that sound familiar, how big of chunks the bits should be? Going back to our permutation lesson, this size has significant influence on the amount of permutations that can exist. These chunks will be determined by you in this internet simulator today. So my think right share on this slide, in this context, what is the protocol establishing? In this lesson, you'll use the Internet Simulator to send a simple line drawing to a classmate encoded in binary. The drawing will be encoded as coordinates on a grid to connect lines. You must develop a protocol for sending a list of numbers to your partner over the Internet Simulator. I challenge you, develop a protocol or set of rules for communicating a drawing to your partner using only numbers. So here's the rules. The image will be a line drawing created by connecting points on a grid like the one seen here. You can discuss and agree on a protocol ahead of time, but the image exchange must happen without communication between the two parties other than through the internet simulator. No talking, no chat, um, no finger waving, nothing. You can only send a single message, a single list of numbers through the internet simulator to describe the whole image. So, remember the internet simulator and how frustrating it was? Here it is again, but new and improved. So it's going to look a little differently. And again, if you're missing this lesson, you missed school, or um, something happened, you know, you can just watch the video right here of this, this exercise. So when I say new and improved, you're able to um, type numbers here instead of a, B, A's and B's. Um, you can go down here and increase the chunks uh, however you would like. Remember, the larger the chunk, um, the greater the permutation, right? So however you'd like, after you send it, there you go. So you could change the chunk after it's already sent. So you can decide that later. So when you're done with the Internet Simulator, um, here's a great set of videos, if we can get through them both, that'd be great, on how what you just did connects to real life um, using HTTP and TCP IP, using those protocols that the Internet uses to send information like you just did. And yes, we're sending information to create pictures all the time. Um, so just here's some video notes. Uh, browsers can be called client, uh, server configuration, cPanel helps and sits on top of this configuration. So that's something for you to think about. Uh, moving into the future, PHP is a computer language. Uh, it's the most popular one for back-end stuff. So when we're looking at these things, it's considered um, the back-end. If you're to take my web design course, you're going to work uh, quite a bit on the front-end. Apache is a type of server program, a very popular one. Uh, files from that folder only are loaded. So that, that is one of those notes that is better in the context of um, the, the video itself. And then the last thing I jotted down is that a load balancer is necessary in case you have a lot of traffic to your website. Um, so that pretty much wraps up our lesson on sending um, binary. Now I just have uh, this paper for you to work on. It looks like this, so I've already answered a couple of the, the first ones for you. So I just need to make sure we can all translate binary into decimal. Okay, and then here's a key just in case you get stuck and I'm not there to help you. And here's our DOL. You have a coordinate grid that is 96 by 96. Assuming that you encode the X and Y coordinate as separate numbers, what is the minimum number of bits that you will need to encode a coordinate in that space? And then what is the greatest technological achievement in the world? After today's lesson, I'm 
I'm wondering if your answer has changed.